Okay, so a rigid tank contains 10 kilograms of air. When you see the word air, what do you think? Ideal gas. And the next sentence says air behaves as an ideal gas, okay? Emphasizing ideal gas. When you see ideal gas, there's a lot of things that come to your mind. List a couple of those things. What is the ideal gas equation? Do you need the equation sheet for that, or do you have it down now? Yeah, I think we have some equations down now. So you should recall, oh, ideal gas, PV is equal to RT. True? Or another form, there's many forms. What else should we recall? U is a function of temperature only, and H is a function of temperature only. Those three things. Internal energy is not a function of temperature and pressure or temperature and specific volume. It's only a function of temperature for an ideal gas. Same with enthalpy. Let's continue to read the 10 kilograms in a rigid tank. Uh, rigid, what's that key word, rigid, mean to you? That Right away, you can dip, you know, put stuff on the side. V is equal to a constant, or V is equal to a constant because it's a closed system. Mass is constant, and the volume's constant because it's rigid, so the specific volume's constant during a process. It says it starts out at a temperature T1 of 860, whoops, can't write, 860 Kelvin, and a pressure P1 of 300 kilopascal. The air is cooled until the temperature now is at T2 is 570 Kelvin. What do you think the pressure does? Goes down. You have a rigid tank. Its volume is not changing. Mass is not entering or leaving, and it's being cooled so that the temperature drops. So the pressure is going to go down. Determine the final pressure, P2. So that's what we want to find, P2. Well, you can do it this way. Take this ideal gas equation, maybe rewrite it like PV is equal to N R bar T, or PV is equal to M R T. Either think about the number of moles of the air trapped in the tank or the mass of the air trapped in the tank, either one. But the mass that's trapped is constant, so PV11 divided by T1 is equal to MR is equal to P2V2 divided by T2. Have you done that enough times? Use that equation so that, oh, if I have a system like that and the mass hasn't changed, but maybe the pressure and the temperature has changed, then I can solve for the other ones. So here it is. The final pressure is equal to the initial pressure times the initial volume divided by the final volume times the uh, final temperature divided by the initial temperature if I did the algebra correct. Thumbs up if you like that algebra. So then what we would do is we'd substitute in this, you would put in your uh, 300 kilopascal. This volume is, ratio is just one. And then the temperature, final temperature, 570. The initial temperature is 860. And sorry, I don't have a calculator, but you would calculate a final pressure and box it. And what units would it be? Kilopascal. Let's take a look at part B. What is the heat transfer? The amount of heat transfer during this process. How would I find Q? That's what I'm asked to find. Either you like the symbol Q or Q1 to 2 or Q1 to 2. Either, either syntax works. Okay? But I want the heat transfer during that process. Uh, just like this, when I first inter introduced to calculating the final pressure, a lot of times I say, what are the units of what I, I introduce a symbol P2 and I expect to find them in units of kilopascal. Let me say that for the second part, part B, Q is my symbol for what I'm looking to calculate. What units should that answer be in? Kilojoules. That's exactly right. A lot of students can't even get that straight, right? They don't know what they're asked for, what symbol to use for what they're asked for, what the units the answer should be in. Try to get that straight, it'll help you. So how then do I calculate Q, which needs the units of kilojoule? Do an energy balance. Ah, music to my ears. You know how to make me happy. You do. I say, hey, just do a first law analysis, energy balance, conservation of energy. For an open system or closed system? Closed system, it's a rigid tank. Can we write that from memory? 
So we'll have u2 minus u1 is equal to q minus w. I neglect changes in kinetic and potential energy. I don't have a, a, a large inertia, like a, what do they call it, flywheel or anything. This is just a station. There's no bulk kinetic energy inside that, that uh, stationary uh, tank. There's no information that would say it's otherwise. And there's no information about changes in potential energy either. How about work? Why is that zero? Because we can calculate work from first principles with the prerequisite class coming into thermo one. You learn something in physics. You learn to force through a distance, work, mechanical work. You just expand that concept to a pressure area or pressure volume change. You know, because the force is a uh, uh, force per unit area is your pressure. A distance cross-sectional area swept gives you volume change. PDD, you get boundary work. And in this case, was there any work? There's no shaft being discussed, no rotating power like that, and there's no boundary work. So you're done with that work term. So if I want to get Q, all I do is get U2 minus U1. How am I going to get U2 minus U1? M times specific two minus specific one. Somebody says, let's use the tables because you're given this temperature of 860. So I can find U1 is U of the air in the air tables at 860 Kelvin. Do I need to know the pressure to evaluate that U out of the air tables? You do not. You'll notice it's only a column of temperature is your primary input. And then U2 is go to the air tables, AIR, I can spell, comma, 570 Kelvin. Done? What do we put for the mass? 10 kilograms. So this Q is equal to so many kilojoules. Chase your units. What are the units? It's, uh, that'll be units of kilogram. And what are the units on the delta U? Kilojoules per kilogram, the units work. Last part. What is the change in the exergy? So you basically say, is it exergy final minus exergy initial? Is that the mass times the change in the specific exergy? Is that what we're asked to solve for? So is that equal to the mass times, hmm, let me back up a little bit. What was the equation for the exergy at state one? U minus U naught plus P naught V minus V naught minus T naught S minus S naught. And I'm going to drop the KE and PE. I'm running out of room and they're negligible, right? Thumbs up if you agree. Do I have every negative and positive sign correct on that equation, or did I make an error? Is it correct? Because otherwise you lose points, and it's a painful experience. Yes, sir? It doesn't have to be, but you can put it there. Just doesn't have to be. All right. Uh, any other comment or question? How about if I write down what is E2? It, uh, you know what? I messed up by not putting one there, one there, one there. And now when we write E2, we get U2 minus U0 plus P0 V2 minus V0 minus T0 S2 minus S0, right? Does that look good? Now I'll take the difference. So E2 minus E1, is that going to be U2 minus U1 plus P0 times V2 minus V1 minus T0 S2 minus S1? And all those u naughts and v naughts and s naught basically cancel out of the exergy change between two states. True? Good. So now what we do is, is we say for an ideal gas, I have to go and I have to get uh, U2 and U1 out of the air table. 
I have to get, uh, first of all, what about this term? V2 minus V1 is equal to? Zero. Because it's a rigid tank. So that, I like it when terms go to zero. Don't you? We don't have to deal with it. Okay, now, a little bit of work on this S2 minus S1. It's an ideal gas. You started using the air tables, stay in the air tables. Right? So is S2 minus S1, is that equal to S2 naught minus S1 naught? Because, hey, there's a column in that air table. It's got that little naught up there. I'm not certain what that naught means, but I know it's an S. And I'm looking for an S, and I've got me an S, and I'm done. No. So what are we missing? Aha. Oh, you're good. Minus R natural log, the ratio of the P's, the final pressure over the initial pressure, P2 over P1. Thumbs up if you like that. Oh, professor. You mean that's pressures in there? Yes, the pressure's in there. Okay, now the other thing is, is what is that R? That R right there, is it the same as this R right here? Yes, how is it related to R bar? Is it that way? That's exactly right. What is R bar? I forgot the name of it. The universal gas constant. And then you have an R for helium, R for air, R for CO2, whatever gas constant of the gas of interest, right? So, all right. Anybody remember big M for air? 28.97. Oh, I forgot the units. It's the, it, the name of it helps us with the units. It's the molar mass. Kilograms per kilomole. Kilograms per kilomole. Don't worry if you are participating with me and you, you, you trip up, right? I always tell students, even one time my son, he's, he's, this is many years ago, he was making a presentation and you're supposed to start the presentation by saying, hello, my name is like, whatever, Randy Montoya. <clears throat> And he was so uh, excited, he messed up his name. <laughs> he gave the name of the kid that just walked off the stage. Uh, no, I'm not John. I'm, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> he was so tongue twisted. So anyway, if you're trying to participate in class, thank you very much. Uh, but uh, don't get too frustrated if, uh, if you think uh, you give the wrong answer once or twice. All right, so what you do is this comes straight out of the table, out of the table, R bar over cap M, the two P's are there. You use the T naught, you get the delta, you, that's how you calculate the change in the exergy. And uh, I'm sorry, I don't have my numeric values here, but what units for this change in the exergy? What should the units be? Kilojoules. There you go. That help? All right, let's press forward. 